Today I'll try to answer the question, what's wrong with screen reading from a designer's point of view? To get it out of the way first, is there something wrong with the screens? 20 years ago computer screens were pretty bad. They were blurry and flickery, the 60 Hz refresh rate, 72 ppi, and they forced you into an unnatural body posture. But today's handheld displays have nothing to do with computer screens from the 90s. Our devices are extremely good at displaying text and they keep getting better. So no, there's nothing wrong with the screens. Sure, the displays emit light and the light bleeds into the letter shapes, but if we choose the contrast and the font weight carefully, then it's fine. Even delicate serif fonts look great on modern displays. This is an actual photograph of 10 point text on an iPhone OLED screen and on a laser printout. As you can see here, a modern screen's display quality is comparable to paper. It's crisp and it's clear. And studies support this. There doesn't seem to be a difference between screens and paper. There is no difference in terms of perceptibility, legibility, and uh, visual discrimination. And that's not really a surprise, is it? Because our own hardware is always the same. We have our eyes to scan the letter forms and our brains to process the letter forms, just like we did 50 years ago. Over the past couple of years, I've spoken to typographers, reading researchers, cognitive psychologists. I'm still not aware of any evidence that the basic process of recognizing letter forms works any differently in digital than it does on paper. So we could assume that it's settled once and for all. Digital reading is just as good as paper. But is it really? Unfortunately not. There was this 2018 paper by Pablo Delgado and team. It's called Don't Throw Away Your Printed Books, a Meta-Analysis on the Effects of Reading Media on Reading Comprehension. And it concludes, paper-based reading yields better comprehension outcomes than digital-based reading. And the advantage of paper-based comprehension has increased in the last 20 years. So should we keep printing paper books for the next 500 years? I don't think our great-great-grandchildren will join Starfleet Academy and still read paper books. The future is already here and the paper is on the way out. Everything I've just told you is not controversial among experts. At least it shouldn't be because there's enough research to back it up. Scientific studies can describe and prove this phenomenon, but they don't usually offer instructions or suggestions how digital reading can be improved. So let's look at it from a UI designer's and typographer's perspective. I think that we as designers of reading experiences need to look at three key areas. Usability, distractions and typesetting quality. Let's look at them one by one. First, usability. A book as a physical object has a huge advantage over anything digital. I can feel it. I can touch it, I can find out how to use it by exploring its shape, its dimensions, its texture, its smell, and no, not really. I can experience it haptically with multiple senses. User interfaces for digital reading, on the other hand, require much more mental effort. I have to bring up some kind of menu and then find out what all these icons and buttons do. Reading a text on a smartphone or on a tablet computer is much less self-explanatory than reading a paper book. As an object, the device is a slate of glass. The stuff we see behind that glass is artificial and distant. The text doesn't have a real shape and not a real place to live. And even for basic tasks like the equivalent of page turning, we have to operate and understand menus and buttons and all kinds of interactive gestures. Which part of a text I'm currently looking at is often not apparent. How I can navigate to a different part of the text is not apparent either. I see a small portion of the text and I have to rely on visual cues to understand how I get to a different part of text and point my viewport at it. Scroll bars are a smart invention. They have been around forever. They're not as visually prominent anymore, but they still serve their purpose and they work well and they will probably stay with us for a long time. But scroll bars are not sophisticated and not detailed enough for navigating long texts. Scroll bars were not designed for long form reading because long form reading didn't exist when scroll bars were invented in the 1970s. Scroll bars cannot replace the feeling of balance between the thickness and weight of the left half versus the right half. This is actually something that we're missing, this feeling of where we are in text. Just by holding the book, I can tell how far into the text I am. This is not nostalgia, this is just the fact that this user interface tells me something 
by its weight distribution, which is definitely something that we don't get from a slab of glass. We should focus on designing better navigation interfaces and orientation interfaces for long-form reading, because that hasn't really been solved yet. We also need a way to specify a text passage to tell someone else, look at this text, go to this part, because page numbers don't really work well in digital. Wait, just got a message. The Amazon Kindle uses something called locations, and I had to look it up. One location is 128 bytes of data, including invisible markup, so that's not really human friendly if you ask me. The Kindle also shows a percentage on the other side. That does make sense, but it's also not useful for you know, telling someone else to go to position 5% of the book. That's not precise enough. And it also doesn't tell me how long the text is. Two more ways on the default Kindle interface to tell me where I am. They have pages, which, as I said, doesn't really make sense. 13 minutes left in chapter. Reading speed is different from person to person, so it's not really a reliable measure either. Are there any other texts that need to refer to a specific text passage without relying on page numbers? Yes, legal text. They have the smart convention of specifying paragraphs in a media-independent way. And religious texts have counted chapters and paragraphs for thousands of years. We could use a combination of chapter names and section numbers and paragraph numbers uh, for our digital text. That would work in digital books, on websites and apps. It wouldn't even need to be visible all the time. We could just hide these chapter and section numbers whenever we don't want to see them. Digital text makes it a lot harder to leave my own annotations, add my own navigational cues, scribble something anywhere on the text, add sticky notes. All of this is close to impossible in digital. Of course, some apps and even some websites have implemented this as a feature, but there is no universal digital text marker. Why is that? I think it's because apps and websites and services are designed that way. Most of them are closed systems. So I think this must be solved at the operating system level or even cross-platform. Digital annotations that are locked into one program or one app, one website are not really that useful. You could say that all of the things I've just discussed are user interface design issues, but actually I think separating them from digital typography would be totally wrong because typography is a part of user interface design and user interface design needs typography. So they really can't be separated. When we talk about digital text, we always talk about the text itself, of course, but also about the experience and how the text is presented and how the user interface around it works. To improve digital reading, we have to improve our user interfaces first, our software. Keep this in mind for the next chapter. Distractions. Distractions are everywhere on our digital devices. Distractions, of course, make it hard to focus on reading. Let's think about the basic building block of the web, hypertext. Hypertext is text with links. Duh. We don't give links a lot of thought because they're so common, but maybe as designers we should be more critical. As Nicholas Carr wrote in his book, The Shallows, links don't just point us to related or supplemental works, they propel us to them. Hyperlinks are designed to grab our attention their value as navigational tools is inextricable from the distraction they cause. Every hyperlink in a text is a potential distraction because every link requires a micro decision. Do I want to click this or not? 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 When we design a text with links, the links should not dominate the text. Instead of using a vibrant color and a thick underline, we can use a darker shade of the color and a very thin, subtle underline. We should not make the links too hard to recognize either because that can be a distraction in itself. Does that make sense? Links that are too hard to recognize as links can also be distractive. For the most immersive reading experience, we may want to just avoid links completely. Hyperlinks require micro decisions, but they are also a micro problem compared to a much bigger problem. The real problem is how our apps and devices are designed and how we use them. Having a background image in the Messenger app is a bad idea, but so is any visual distraction, blinking banner, uh, anything that captures the attention and moves it away from the text. But even when you only have your well-designed reading app in the foreground, 
you're constantly aware that all the interesting other stuff is just hiding from you temporarily and you can always get there with a few taps or swipes. The device can do so many things. It's a shapeshifter. It can become your music player, your messenger, your video call machine, your car rental, your shopping guide, anything really. How are you supposed to immerse yourself? in a text if all the interesting stuff is just sitting right behind it, waiting for you to engage with it. Oh wait, got a message. Here's another book I recommend. It's called How to Break Up With Your Phone by Catherine Price. And she writes, Every decision, no matter how tiny or subconscious, pulls our attention away from what we are reading. This in turn makes it harder to absorb the content of what we're reading, let alone to think about it critically or remember it later. Whenever we finally manage to focus on something, hmm. notifications remind us about all the other interesting stuff. Notifications remind us to do other stuff and we get distracted again. Okay, some notifications are helpful, but many of these services and apps want us to maximize our engagement and they exploit the human weaknesses and want us to compulsively check our social media feeds and open their app. And Multitasking on a general purpose computer puts zero friction between focused reading on one hand and consumption on the other. Now I've talked about usability and distractions. What about typography? Can better digital typesetting lead to better reading comprehension? I'm not aware of any conclusive scientific studies. So let's speculate. We have all been exposed to amateur typography and unambitious digital typesetting for decades. Many of us have grown up with it. I know I have. It's just a screen. We cannot expect it to look as refined as a real newspaper or a real book. I've made this little timeline of when relevant technologies for digital reading became widely available on consumer devices. Most advancements in display quality and layout for digital reading happened in the past 10 years. But all in all, we're talking about 40 years of personal computing now. Two generations who think that the trade of amateur typography on their screens is normal. Desktop publishing with computers for paper got all the attention and love from traditional typographers. They have totally neglected digital reading for many years. And I think that's the reason why computer scientists could shape digital reading. And it shows. Old school typographers seem to hate digital reading. There's always this uncertainty, this feeling of not being in control over how the text looks. That's because digital typesetting is typesetting with unknowns. As a digital designer, I don't know the content when I design the layout. Most often when I design the layout, a developer will build a template from it, an editor will fill in the text, and traditional typography doesn't even get a chance to happen beyond stuff like picking the font and choosing the size and setting a line height because the actual typesetting happens automatically at a later point in time I'm not involved anymore. My design also has to work on a plethora of different devices and it has to respect user preferences like larger text settings so the typesetting is done in real time by the layout engine on every single device. If you look beyond the much better screen technologies and rendering, a typical Modern website still has the same careless typography as websites did back in the 90s because designers and typographers haven't figured out a way to Be in control of that last bit the automatic layout. Let's look at some headlines from digital magazines and newspapers None of these is even close to decent typesetting. These layouts would never pass quality control in a print product But somehow on screens everyone tolerates it there's no fine-tuning, there's no micro-typography, line breaks are in the wrong places where they don't support the meaning. A time-traveling typographer from a hundred years ago would be very disappointed with us. We have all this incredible hardware, but then it produces underwhelming typography generated automatically by a series of coincidences in our software. Good typography is hard to formalize, but there are Two typographic issues that I notice in many digital publications. Bad typographical syntax and bad line breaks. Typographical syntax is just a fancy word for using the correct typographic signs like punctuation. Here's a very common example just to make sure we're on the same page. Instead of these typewriter style quotes highlighted in red, typographers prefer the traditional curly quotes. And German typographers would use these or these the typewriter quotes don't really exist in typography. It's okay to use them in informal correspondence like texting, but it's not okay to use them on a professional website if you ask a typographer. And yet the majority of digital publications use the amateur style quotation marks on their sites. 
There are many more nuances and details to tell professional typography from amateur typography. I'm not going to go into details here, but you can pick up one of the classics like Robert Bringhurst's The Elements of Typographic Style or for German Buchstaben kommen selten allein by Indra Kupferschmidt. The good news is that we could boost the quality of many websites by applying typographic rules automatically. Computers are really great at applying rules. Actually, that's what they do. For example, we can tell the computer to look for typewriter style quotation marks and replace them automatically by looking at the spaces around them. Programming a computer to improve the typographical syntax is not that hard. In fact, there are quite a few libraries and modules that you can download and plug into your website or app and have better typography automatically. I've made a list of ready-to-use plugins and modules on GitHub. The other important issue that hasn't been solved for digital typesetting yet is adding good line breaks. Good line breaks make the composition look balanced and good line breaks also support the meaning and probably the comprehension of the text. But on computers the layout engines often produce line breaks without considering aesthetics and meaning. The layout engine in an operating system or a browser comes with basic language specific rules and dictionaries, but still it doesn't really know what it's doing. If we resize our viewport to be slightly narrower, this is what hyphenation algorithms will typically do. This behavior is predictable and it's orthographically correct, but it doesn't make a typographer happy. Let me show you two methods to influence the line break behavior in a browser if you know the content. The first one is a soft hyphen. Instead of relying on the browser's automatic hyphenation, you can insert a soft hyphen character. This is an invisible character that tells the layout engine where to hyphenate a word. We actually use this trick on the Typefax website. Our CMS has an extra field for the display title so that we have better control over the line breaks in the headlines. A similar method is to use non-breaking spaces. I use them all the time to prevent single words from sitting alone in the last line of a paragraph. Of course, you can combine soft hyphens and non-breaking spaces for the best results. The problem with these manual interventions is that we cannot hand optimize our content all the time. That's just not how digital works. That's not how digital workflows work. If you wanted this on a news website, you would have to train the editors to basically do typesetting for you. And these are hacks. Even if we manage to automate these, which I encourage you to do, of course, it's far from perfect. But maybe there's a better way. Maybe we can use a technology that's already on the horizon to do the typesetting for us. Looking ahead, we want the layout engine to make autonomous decisions on our behalf. We want a simulated trained eye to look at the composition and optimize it in real time when it's rendered. To make the whole thing a little more ambitious, um, I would say we want decisions that reflect our attitudes. Not every typographer makes the same decisions and we don't want this to go away in the digital world. And finally, we want rules to be broken if necessary. What we really want is to implant the typographer's mind and heart into the layout engine, which is of course not possible. <clears throat> so. so what we really want to achieve is hard to achieve with strictly rule-based computer logic. Maybe we should look into a fancy new technology. What's that thing called again? Machine learning. Let me share something with you that I've been thinking about for a while now. I think that machine learning could be the future of typesetting. Machine learning has something to do with artificial intelligence and neural networks and other buzzwords you may have heard recently. The principle of machine learning is quite easy to understand. We train the computer to make sense of things by showing it lots of examples. We let the computer draw its own conclusions and we simulate understanding. We teach skills that are not hard rules. Instead, we show examples and train the machine. We could show the computer 10,000 examples of good typesetting and then show the computer 10,000 examples of bad typesetting. With this, the computer can learn to judge the quality of layouts that it has never seen before. We could teach the computer to make decisions like a typographer in real time on the device from experience and training. We could train it with specific styles our opinions by carefully selecting the training material. And then we would have some of the relevant parts of the typographer's brain inside of a neural network. And we can put the simulated brain into an app or load it to lay out a website to insert line breaks, sane hyphenation, professional microtypography and correct typographical syntax. All of this could happen responsively, in real time, autonomously on the device. Imagine we could load a world-class typographer's typesetting skills like a web font. I like this idea because instead of shipping a one-size-fits-all typography engine with the operating system, we could preserve diversity and different opinions. 
Many designers and typographers will now probably say, yeah, sounds good. So let's wait for the developers to build it. That's not how it's going to work. Don't wait for it. It's our job. Only we can make that happen because we care about this stuff and we can tell whether it actually works. Let's go back one step. We don't have to start with advanced machine learning to improve digital reading. We can start by designing better user interfaces. We can start by creating more focused reading experiences. And we can use existing technologies to create much better typography today. I think everything that's wrong with screen-based reading today can be resolved by better design and well-designed technologies. Thanks for watching.